Hey everybody, welcome to James Plays Ghost Master. Ooh, spooky. But don't worry, just because this is a spooky game on YouTube doesn't mean that there's going to be any jump scares, okay? I'm definitely not going to put any jump scares into this video. So, if you pee your pants, it's only because you're into that sort of thing. Let's start a new game. The following haunters have been assigned. Starting the game out, we get access to eight different ghosts. And we have two places that we'll be able to visit. Haunting 101 and the Ghoul Room. We're going to start here in the Ghoul Room. This Gravenville school is your base of operations on the mortal plane. Come here when you wish to train your ghostly minions. However, training costs gold plasm, which you will earn only when you start haunting. Click the button at the bottom right of the screen to leave the Ghoul Room. So this is the Ghoul Room, our base of operations. It's actually the school that was in the intro. Complete with the faux Ouija board. For controls for this game, it can all be done with just the mouse. So you can just play with one hand and use your other hand for... Not, I'm not really sure what you would be doing at the same time as playing this game. But, anyway, pan around by dragging the cursor to the edge of the screen. Click on things with the left button, which we will be doing very shortly. Hold the right button down and move the mouse to change the camera angle. Zoom in and out with the wheel. And then a combination of holding the right mouse button and using the wheel lets you go between floors. And as you see, we've got plenty of ghosts hanging out, the eight that we start with, and plenty, plenty of room for more ghosts which we will get along the way. Now I'm going to go up here and show Clatter Claws. When you're here in the Ghoul Room, you get the Gold Plasm in levels, and you use it to buy new powers. As you see, we have four powers available for Clatter Claws. Room for two more. Uh, this is the lowest level power. This is highest level power. That's why it costs 750 for this and only 50 for that. So we'll worry about buying powers later on. Maybe you guys can give me some suggestions once I have the money for it. Orders are behaviors that you give to your ghosts. And we can only use this one order at the moment because Clatter Claws is a wild ghost. And the more we use them in missions, the better behaved they will become. Which not only gives you access to more orders, but they will also be able to accept multiple orders at the same time. It, Clatter Claws is a horde type, which just dictates the kind of powers that it uses. And its fetter is inside, and we'll talk a little bit more about fetters when we go into Haunting 101. You are ready for your field training, young Ghostmaster. We are taking you to the Kappa Lambda Sorority House in Gravenville University. Only a small number of sorority girls are in residence at the moment, but scaring them all away should be a sufficient test of your abilities. First mission, basic, scare everybody out of the place. We have eight ghosts total, but we can only use four for this mission. We're going to hit recommend, and it'll give us a team that the computer, that the game developers felt worked best for the mission out of your available ghosts. So we're going to be using Cogjammer who is a sprite. Also, a sprite is Clatter Claws. Boo is a... Is it a... Yeah, Disturbance. And Shivers is actually a Frightener. Now, these six different categories determine 
they're just kind of like power ratings. These are the ones that use the least amount of power for their abilities, and horrors are the ones that will use the most. Also divided into subcategories here, which again just determines their types of powers that they've got. So we're going to stick with this team and go in. Drive the Kappa Lambda girls from their sorority house. Now first thing I want you to look at is up here in the top left. This is our plasm meter. We're currently using 0 out of 100. When you bind a ghost to somewhere in the level that uses a certain amount of plasm. When you select powers, that also will use a certain amount of plasm. The higher up you go, the more it uses, because they're stronger powers. Also, they are not only going to use just this one, like Kinesis in this case, but they will use all the powers below that one, so it's a good bang for your buck. You're not actually consuming plasm, you're just occupying it. So, I'm going to bind Boo to this room, he takes up 10. And when I bench him, I get that 10 back. To increase this meter, you have to scare people. If you leave them calm for too long, you're not scaring them enough, this will start to go down. That's not good. Anyway, we are taking a look at what everybody's doing. We have somebody sleeping over here, two people chatting, some more people on the lower floor, nobody in the basement yet. And you can get some more details about those people over here on the right. I'm going to click on one, go to their... Oh, okay. Go to their uh, view of them, or you can just go to them with an overhead view, POV, which really isn't that helpful. And then there's Bio. Bio has these meters, which are also here when you hover over somebody. And it also has a little bit of a Bio to them, and fears, subconscious fears, and mood. Let's talk about all those real quick. Belief is their belief in the supernatural, and the higher that is, the more susceptible they are to having these bars raised. Madness and terror. And you raise all those with different types of powers. And you see that there's a white portion that has a a limit to it on the bar here. See, Belief goes all the way up, but Terror and Madness, they're pretty low for Cindy Haddock. If we go to somebody else, here we are, Joanna Fields. You see, her bars are pretty high, but she's also quite the believer. Now, when you trigger a fear, you will actually get a bigger boost to filling these meters. You'll get an even bigger boost with subconscious fears, but we don't know anybody's fears yet. Unless you read their bio, in which case you get a little hint that maybe she doesn't like blood very much. You don't necessarily get hints like that for everybody, but it's a good starting point for some people. And another way that you can reveal those fears, aside from looking at the bio, aside from trial and error, is that there will actually be some ghosts that have powers, like Taste Aura, which will reveal fears. Now, let's see. One more thing that I'm going to talk about is fetters. You see that there's different fetters listed for everybody. And that is where a ghost can be bound to. I did Boo earlier. His fetter is anywhere inside, so any indoor area. See, the, the cursor, it glows green once I'm inside, and dulls when I'm outside. 
Also, areas will be outlined in green. You know, with the rug, when I switch to shivers, because that's emotional and he's emotional. So, I'm going to go up to Cogjammer here. Cogjammer's fetter is electrical. Anything electrical, he can be bound to. And that's important as we go over here and we see a ghost who's not actually in our team. Let's go talk to her. You'll find ghosts like that in all the levels. They're stuck in the mortal plane, and you need to figure out how to free them. In this case... Oops. In this case, she's bound to a vacuum cleaner. Which is electrical. Just so you're aware. Now, even though she's stuck here and she's not part of our team, we do have access to her powers. That's also useful for some of the ghosts that are stuck in levels that are that you need to free. And she also has orders. As you see, she has a larger range of orders that you can give. And she can accept two of them. That's because she's a little better behaved. To somebody like a little spider gremlin. Now, Cogjammer, electrical. We're going to bind him to this nearby radio. We can't bind him to the vacuum cleaner because she's bound to it. One ghost per fetter. And there's Cogjammer, little ghost monkey. And we're going to start using powers. Now, this meter hasn't gone down at all because we haven't actually done anything yet. Now that's going to change. That should go up and down depending on how good we are at being a, a spooky ghost man. The power we want from him is wild and crazy, so we're maxing him out. Every device in the area malfunctions. Like a vacuum cleaner. Now we have access to her, to put her wherever her fetter will let her be put. And we will have access to her in later levels as well. Now he used Spark while somebody was nearby, which made her a little afraid. Gave a little bit of terror, gave her a spook, a startle, and Plasm went up. And it's going to start going down as everything calms down again. I'm explaining a lot here, and I'm not doing a lot, and I'm sorry about that. I just feel like there's enough to mention in the game that getting it all out of the way now is ideal. But don't worry. Now we're going to actually start doing some stuff. You see these little times two multipliers that are surrounding them? That is very good. That's going to make them more susceptible to, let's say, a swarm of spiders taking over this room. And here's somebody who's just totally freaked out and running away, and there's an X over her. We scared her so much that she hauled ass out already from one thing. You see in her bio it says even a fake spider would cause her to faint. So a ghostly one, even better. And 
pretty soon. Yep, there we go. Now let's see what else we want to do here. There's nobody in the basement, but there is a couple people upstairs, including our little sleeping friend, Tootie. Hi, Tootie. Let's bring you a friend. One who will totally fuck up your shit. Yeah, she just... Yeah, that's a great way to wake up. She's scared. She's running. We got some people out here. You know what? I think we're going to bring them... Little spider friend up here. Now, he's got different powers that he's using. Let's talk about that in the meantime. Rattle chains. It will raise suspicion, make people curious. Maybe they'll come into the room. If they've got a high belief, maybe they'll think, oh, it's a spooky ghost noise, and their terror and madness will go up. Same with Leek. Leek will make them curious as well. Maybe make them scared. Hide and seek, he pops out and just straight up scares them. And Kinesis is what we started the day with. Throwing everything around. And we've already got somebody else out of the house. Another thing to note is you see the bars on the side of the powers? they have a cooldown. So he'll just alternate between powers, then when another one is ready, he'll use that one. Not every power has a cooldown. Some powers are persistent, like gusts, which so will bind Weather Witch outside. Her fetter is thoroughfare or throughfare. So places that are like through ways. If that makes sense. Like, here, these are through around the house. And hallways, like this. But not main rooms. So I'm having her stay outside and do gusts, which are persistent. Maybe make it a little less appealing to be outside. Our poor Tootie is almost completely out of it. Three people gone. I think this is... No, let's see. Yeah. Blair's close, but not as close as she will be once we... add Shivers to the mix. And we're just going to go to Taste Aura with him. Because that will reveal fears, not that we need that, but it can be, you know, just to show you. And his other power that he'll trigger is Fright, and that will just automatically give people a sense of terror. Now let's see, I'm going to bench Cogjammer. And let me see what everybody's doing. A couple people coming back into the house, that's good. And perfect. They're going to get a little bit of fright. And there's Taste Aura. And that revealed her fear of blood. The one that we saw before. Now it's marked here. Everybody's a little on edge. I wonder why got three people left. They're staying on this main floor for now. So let's bring down Clatter Claws. And let's bind Cogjammer upstairs. Just in case somebody wants to come upstairs. And we'll move Boo over here. And that should be good. It's just a matter of time that people get their asses out of here. Actually, I'm gonna 
bring Cogjammer to the basement and bind him over here. Sometimes people will come to the basement and we just want something down here that will scare them, make them feel uneasy, keep them out of the basement, just like we're, we want people to stay out of here. Get them all gathered in a place where they'll be hit with powers and just blast them over and over until they can't take it anymore. They'll get scared, they'll stay out of places. But a big main room on the main floor of this house, there's not too much avoiding of that. And we've revealed another fear. Loud noises, which Maybe we want to throw a thunderclap her way. Well, well, we gave her a little going away present. But th those are the things that are important. Knowing what the fears are, knowing where to put your guys, trying to keep the people rounded up. Oh, don't go up there. That's bad for you. That's not going to be a good time. Oh. Oh. She just doesn't know what to do with herself. Here's Blair. She is down for the count. So all we have left is our buddy Joanna Fields. Fortunately, we don't have any blood to show her. But she will get there very, very soon. Again, sorry for taking a long time here trying to explain all the stuff, but hopefully that'll make later videos, later missions go a lot smoother where I don't have to explain as much. And you know what? How about we just go straight up with TK Storm? Not that it's going to help at the moment, but, you know, we have the plasm to work with. And we'll do... Oh, wrong thing. We'll do Siren Song for her. And that will draw people to her if they're in range to be affected. Which... Joanna certainly isn't. She's going out. But just another opportunity for me to tell you what something does. So we finished this mission. Just gotta wait for her to haul ass out of here. And look at our plasm now. 516. When somebody flees or goes crazy, you get like a permanent bonus to your plasm as well for the mission. So we did pretty good, I think. A lot better than the 100 we started with. And we get scored. You get scored based on ghosts that you rescue, how many haunters were banished. That's not going to be an issue just yet. Don't worry about it. What kind of experiences the people in the house had. Scares, shocks, screams, things like that are going to be pretty common. Fleeing or going insane, those are a given for levels like this where you have to scare the crap out of people. Total score is broken down into gold plasm every thousand points. And then there's a time rating. As you see, we took quite a long time. And the next target time would be under 15 minutes, which is possible. It's, it's possible to do these levels fast, but Keep in mind, these characters like to do their own thing. So, they're not always going to play ball when you want to do a speedrun. Yeah. And also, it's not the most important thing to go for like a real fast time. Just have fun with this and get your plasm. Here's two more levels that have opened up. Weird Seance. 
and the Calamityville Horror. Which one will I do next time? I guess you'll just have to tune in and find out. So until then, everybody, bye-bye.